What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are here with another preview slash prediction video. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe you're thinking this. I don't know. Man, it's early in the week. Doesn't this thing usually drop on, like, Saturday or Friday? It's Wednesday, maybe. You might be thinking this on Thursday. I don't know. But, yes, you're right. This is early in the week. But it's different. It's different, all right? It's playoff time. I wanted to get into this early. I've already done a lot of deep dive on this LA Rams team, man. I immediately just dove into this game. Okay, we've done the all 22 from the Lions all season long. I did my rewatch, but I was like, instead of doing a video on that, I'm just going to dive right into this LA Rams team. And I want to do a video early in the week, man. I want to get it out there. Now, with that being said, because of me uploading this early, there's a real possibility that I'll revisit certain things that I say in this, and I'll come back, and maybe I change my mind on certain things. Like, actually, instead of doing this, maybe I try this, because I watched this team do this against the Rams, and that worked. So there's a chance that stuff like that happens, and we'll probably also do some sort of like pregame show, as usual, on Sunday, because we play a night game. So that could be a pretty long pregame show. So this also kind of allows me to revisit what I say here throughout the rest of the week, continue to watch this team. Plus, we'll have a better picture of the injury report and for the Lions side of things specifically with Sam Laporta that could have a massive impact on how the Lions approach this game and same thing with the Rams because there's players like Tyler Higby where I'm like I don't really know who's going to be out there at cornerback for them so there's questions like that for both sides but specifically for the Lions with Sam Laporta some of that picture really not that clear right now really until this weekend according to the Lions so with that being said this is my early preview slash prediction but really as the title suggests this is why I believe the Detroit Lions will be the LA Rams on Sunday. So let's get it started. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with another preview slash prediction video, man. As the title suggests, there is no lies here. I do believe the Detroit Lions will beat the LA Rams on Sunday. Now, I understand that's a different approach than maybe we've taken in the past with some of these preview slash prediction videos. However, this just felt necessary to title this. It really did, and that's because I dove into this one, and I hear all the outside noise. I understand the spread is not massive for the Lions at home, and most people seem to be thinking that the LA Rams are going to win this football game. I've heard it all. I've heard it all. You've probably heard it all. Their quarterback's better. Their coaching staff is better. Their defense is better. And I hear it. I'm like, okay, I hear all this noise. Let me actually dive into it because that's what we do around here. We actually dive into it, okay? I'm not going to sit here and tell you which quarterback's better. That's who I'm picking in this game. That's, that's, that's dumb, all right? We're really going to dive into it as we usually do. Now, it is Wednesday, so we have the first initial look at the practice report. Now, this was a walkthrough according to Dan Campbell, so we have multiple players on here with rest. But there is some good news. We'll start with that first. First off, we have with the offensive lineman, Taylor Decker, Graham Glasgow, both out or no participation today. Both of them, however, are listed with rest. We're going to need all the guys on the offense line against this pass rush and this defensive front. So, again, should be good news there. Cam Laporte is the big one. No participation today. But as we were told by Dan Campbell, they won't really have a good idea whether or not he'll be able to play until like midday Friday. That would be the last practice report day as well. So maybe we get a sense then if he's practicing at all. Now, he did say that he was out there at walkthrough, but no participation today for Sam Laporte. Told with Sam Laporte that the diagnosis was promising for Sam Laporta, but we'll just kind of have to keep an eye on that and see if anything improves as we continue through the week. Also, we have Frank Ragnon here with the offensive lineman, no participation, but again, he was also listed with rest. Now, on to the ones that we're kind of not sure about. Kali Freeman, no participation today, dealing with a knee. It doesn't seem like Kali Freeman is going to play this weekend. Biggest question there, of course, is on special teams because he gives us such a boost on special teams, but then also we know that he could be a really dynamic piece offensively, especially when you don't have a guy like Jameis Williams. The promising thing is, we should have Jameis Williams full participation today. He's been dealing with the ankle last week. He also popped up with illness, but we have full participation today from him, as well as the other Bama, the former Bama player, Brian Branch, dealing with a wrist injury, is also full participation. Now, Jerry Jacobs is listed as limited participation, dealing with a thigh injury. We've seen him mainly on special teams, since we've seen a lot more Kendall Wilder and even a little bit of Khalil Dorsey in that mix. Full participation as well from John Kaminsky. We could absolutely use him. We got a good taste of Romeo last week, and Romeo played his butt off. We could also, though, use John Kaminsky, especially to stop a run, and the other Rams, obviously all the talk is about their passing attack and the countless amount of weapons that they have. They have a lot, but their run game has been very effective this season, and they changed it up schematically, but that's going to be a big part for us. Not only that, but of course, also getting pressure, because I think this is an offensive line that you can definitely get after. You can confuse them with some stunt looks as well, and John Kaminsky is one of the best at doing that. Big news, James Houston, full participation today. He's dealing, of course, with that ankle that he's recovering from, and he's not on the active roster yet, but full participation. Now, we didn't see him in the season finale, but we held out hope that, like, hey, man, if this guy can get held, like, I still think there was a shot that this guy could play at some point in the playoffs. Full participation today is a great start. 
not going to say he's going to play or not. However, if he is ready to go, they could absolutely use him, especially if they can get the LA Rams into some obvious pass downs. I would think that his role would be somewhat limited, you know, even more than what we've seen from James Houston, but definitely could get him out there on some pass rush situations and let him just go because he is dynamic and he can chase the quarterback down in a hurry. And also to the point that I kind of just made with the games that you can run up front, the success that you can have against this team, another approach a lot of teams have taken is trying to get rushers right through the middle, right? Right against their centers slash guards. And a way you could do that as well is dropping out a guy like Houston. If he can play underneath in the third down spot, you can bring in Alex or Campbell or a Barnes or a Jalen Reese Mabin and try to get a free rusher in that sense. The running back's really strong in pass protection when he gets his hands on guys, but at the same time, at times you can get guys completely free and he could open up that possibility as well with the Kaminsky's and Pascals for stunt work. Cam Sutton also full participation. We're going to need him this week dealing with toe slash heel. And then finally, it's Brock Wright with full participation. And that's massive. Doesn't give you really anything of the receiving threat that Sam Laporta does. He doesn't replace Sam Laporta in any way as a receiver. But what he does give you is a blocker. And he does open up still 12 personnel possibilities with a guy like James Mitchell that you're comfortable with. And that can be very effective against his defense. It would mainly be James Mitchell that you want to get the football to. But against his defense, one of the positives is forcing to put extra backers on the field. And a guy like Brock Wright being healthy could allow the Lions to still do that, even if they don't have Sam Laporta. But of course, we'd love to have Sam Laporta. I trust James Mitchell. He's not Sam Laporta, but I do trust what James Mitchell has done. So it is nice to have that depth where at very least if we can't have Laporta this weekend, we can still have two tight ends. Again, neither of them are Sam Laporta, but you still have two tight ends that you do like. So let's dive into it. How the Detroit Lions will beat the LA Rams, and we're going to start off with the Lions defensive approach in this game. And this is something that could absolutely change how I feel about this as we continue to go through and as I continue to watch more. I've went through about four games of the LA Rams this season. Of course, their most recent with their starters being the New York Giants game, and man, the Giants were impressive in that game defensively. Now, it's Wink Martindale, so you know you're going to get a lot of blitzing looks, which is kind of unique. He's pretty unique. He's an extremely aggressive defensive coordinator. However, I will say Aaron Glenn is a pretty aggressive defensive coordinator as well in his own right. If we're just talking about blitzing, he is that as well. But I thought the Giants had a really nice plan for the Rams, yet the Rams still found ways to break things open and exploit certain things and expect certain looks, and that's one of the keys against this team is that the LA Rams are just really good offensively. They have a ton of weapons that they can throw at you from Puka Nakua to Cooper. Cup, uh, Kyron Williams now in the run game where that has gone. Tyler Higby, if he can play a tight end as a third down matchup piece. They are deep offensively, and you tie that along with, offensively speaking, Stafford opens up everything in their playbook. They can run anything they want offensively. They pretty much have answers for whatever you want to do, and they're very adaptable as the game rolls on. If you continue to play one thing, if you have a theme that you're kind of leaning into, they're going to adapt as the game goes on. Now, I do think it's a positive in a sense that we haven't played this team yet this season. I think you look at the Vikings or the Packers, and you You've seen them a couple times, and I thought the Packers were a perfect example. Second time we saw them, I thought they were prepared for what we were going to do. We had to adjust. We had to wrinkle a little bit what we are doing, and a man coverage helped us out. But I think with a team like the Rams, while you see it on film, and obviously all your attention is going to this game, I still think it's different when you haven't played that team yet. And you throw some wrinkles into what you want to do and who you are as a defense, and I think there's going to be benefits to that. Though, I think the Lions are going to have to continue to keep it change it up on this team and assuming if this thing was close throughout this will be one of those games where you have to come in with kind of multiple looks for this team kind of like the Dallas game where you come in you're not as aggressive the game rolls on you start to get really aggressive in the second half you come in with kind of two different looks for them offensively I think this will be a team where you're going to see a lot of movement to try to throw off and just force them to hold the ball a little bit longer so for me what do I like okay I'm going to tell you the strategy that I like against this team because I do think overall there's really two ways to play it and I wouldn't be surprised if we see both of these ways is one is you play a lot of shell coverage, you play two deep safeties, you lean in cover four, cover six, right? You kind of keep everything in front of you. You ask those guys underneath, Alex Anzalone, Jack Campbell, Brian Branch. You ask your underneath, Derek Barnes. Those guys are going to have to be really sound in the flats. The LA Rams are going to be willing to take that. They're going to open up a lot of their stick concepts. They're going to get the curl flats, and they're going to get the ball out of their hands very quickly. They are one of the fastest teams at getting the ball out of their hands in under 2.5 seconds. A majority of their passes get out of Stafford's hands that fast. So they're a fast passing offense. So very aggressive, and that's kind of like the New York Giants style. Now, I've seen teams have versions of this, like the Dallas Cowboys, where they weren't as aggressive as the Giants, right? But they still did have aggressive tendencies in there that they mixed in against this team. And I'll tell you what, from what 
I've seen so far where I think the Lions can really be at their best, and I think as an overall game plan, what the Lions are going to want to do is kind of like what we did the first time we played the Rams a couple years ago. Big difference personnel-wise, but the Lions' overall idea was we want to hold time of possession, we want to get a lead early, so we went out and scored first drive, we received, I don't know if we, you know, they deferred or what happened there, but we got the ball first, we scored, then of course we did the onside kick, we also faked the punt, we got up 10-0, and that game was able to score, stay within one score, which allowed the Lions to keep their run game alive. Now, it's different, they don't have to be that time management sensitive, but I still think ideally for the Lions, they'd want to play with the lead, they also want to be in a situation where they can get aggressive defensively, see if they can create a couple turnovers, because I think what makes this defense, and we've talked about it, is the backbone of their run defense and being opportunistic, right? That's what's going to make this defense successful in the playoffs throughout this playoff run and I think for the Lions ideally if they can play into that mode by being able to play with the lead leaning into your offense especially in a matchup like this where I think you feel good about your offense as well as defensively getting aggressive and coming up with like one or two potential turnovers to win that battle at home and then you can play a little bit safer with the football in terms of just protect the football you win that battle I think you feel good about your chances so that's the overall vision what does that mean for me so first down specifically this is a team that I want to play one deep safety consistently on first down I'm rotating between cover three and cover one looks. I'm also not opposed to bringing pressure on first down, specifically as soon as Matthew Stafford gets under center. Now, their adjustment to this, and they could do it immediately, will be putting Stafford in pistol. It's been one of their biggest adaptions throughout the season as a passing offense is putting him in pistol, protecting Stafford. It's not a bad offensive line, but it's not great either. Here with Avila, the rookie at left guard, then also at center, they have Shelton, who struggled a little bit, specifically in pass protection. They can have some breakdowns there as well. Now, Dotson's played well at right guard. They have a really sound right tackle and Havenstein at left tackle they have Jackson it's not a bad offensive line but I do think getting aggressive early especially when you go under center is going to be bringing some heat bringing extra rushers why well number one 88 percent of the time they do a drop back from under center it's a play action play so that's the first thing and whether that's turning his back to the defense or not or it's a bootleg getting aggressive and attacking Stafford in the sense of shutting down the run first because that's first priority you're talking about a team that averages 4.3 yards per carry that's 11th in the league 120 yards per game that's 11th in the league and 8th in expected rushing your eighth and expected points added through the run this season. They have emerged as a rushing team, and we'll talk about that more in a second, but to me, being aggressive on first down, at very least, put a safety in the box, even if you're not going to blitz. Cover one, cover three, I'm going to rotate between those. I think it plays into, you know, what we've done in the past as well, and I would be aggressive on early downs, especially if they go under center. Now, for our style, you know, we have corners that like to play in kind of the cover six, the quarters looks, right? They want to play on top of it, Cam Sutton, be able to dive on some of these routes in particular, but I do think on early downs at very least I want to consistently get a safety in the box even if I'm rolling out of it that brings me on to second down now tying along with that if you continue to be aggressive on first down they're going to start to mix in a lot of screens however why I think they have issues is on early downs against pressure I don't think they have a lot of consistent answers one of them for them is screens now if you're playing more man coverage like Dallas for example the answer for that is they just man up with who's catching the screen tight end back and they can take him down for the Lions they'll probably lean more zone because that's who they've been so far this season so they're going to really really put a lot of stress on those guys, which means that for me, my wrinkle there is while I'm playing aggressive with the safety in the box on first down, I'm also having to bring heat because I don't want to allow them to get one-on-ones on the outside. Stafford to hit his back foot with a four-man rush and take a shot. I don't want them to be able to live in that mode and just beat up our corners. Instead, I want to bring extra bodies, but at the same time, I'm finding a rotation between bringing the blitz and dropping out occasionally. I feel like you need to have some of that balance. That way, when they start to anticipate it, they throw those screens. Occasionally, you can be in a spot where you can be set up to kind of take those away. Then when you move on to kind of the second down situation, it depends how first down goes. If they're backed up a little bit, man, I love rolling safeties against this team. Showing one deep, showing two deep, rolling post snap. I love rolling safeties because my key for this is make Stafford hold the ball just a little bit longer. Don't give him the pre-snap look and say this is exactly what we're doing. The one coverage I'm kind of okay with doing that is like cover four because it's kind of like, okay, we know what it is. They're going to try to overload a side. We'll just have the bodies go over there and we'll play quarters coverage. The thing is, they'll have beaters for it. You just have to be on top of, okay, we expect beaters because this is what we're playing. That's one of the zone coverages that I actually like, and statistically speaking, Stafford with the Rams has been much better versus cover one. Like, he's been elite there than, like, a two-deep safety kind of look. And for me, that's one of those coverages that I am kind of fine with leaning into if the Lions wanted to do something like that because then you could also get run support as well. But I love rolling safeties on second down. You know, for me, I just think you need to force Stafford to hold the ball a little bit longer, get beyond the first three. Don't tell 
tell him immediately where that first read is going to be and just try to take that away, try to force him onto the second thing. Again, I'm still willing to be aggressive here, still willing to blitz out of these zone looks as well. And like we saw against the Giants, it worked for a lot of the game, and then they took advantage of it. They said, okay, you want to keep rolling safeties? So like this, they give you the eye candy in the backfield with Puka, and then as you see the safety was rolled into the box on this play, on the play fake, you see him recognize that it looks like the receiver is coming towards him. So he's staying underneath. Then he breaks back outside, and instead of being in that spot, which he normally would if there was no post-snap roll from the safety however now he's chasing on the play because he was supposed to roll to that two deep safety look at the snap right how about this and they got the safety to dive underneath they tried to roll back over top but he was too late and they got the shot play so they ended up eventually getting a look out of it which means that again not every play can I just roll safeties over and over and this is why as well as you know through the game if you come into halftime you change it up you say okay let's start rolling say let's be aggressive on second down versus first you know first half you're aggressive on first down maybe you're also dropping out on second down you say let's play quarters let's keep things in front of us on second down let's try to get them in many of the third down positions as we can interestingly enough this is still one of the best you know play action teams in the nfl and they're one of these teams that will still look for a shot even if their first down play is successful one of my wrinkles would be drop eight on second down as well i'd be looking to that to not give up the quick underneath play that they want to get against zone coverage if you're going to lean more zone if i trust us more against man i would say just lean into that in that spot but if we're going to play more zone i would look for drop eight scenarios trying to take away anything quick underneath and still being aware that they can get the shot and you don't want them to break it open here you can see an example from a couple years ago. Second and long line stay aggressive, and obviously, again, they're looking for a potential shot, and they don't really have a good answer for it. Now, what you do see, what they do have an answer for, is they consistently know how to overload. So if you give them a pre-snap look where they can decipher where they probably want to get to with the football, they can overload your zone coverage. Now, Lions back then played a lot of man, and it actually worked pretty well playing man. So if Lions want to lean into it, I wouldn't have an issue with it. But like I said, whether they're going to overload, the communication and zone coverage has to be on point. Hey, if they got two over here, we have to get a body over there. You know, they'll see that if you're pressed up on the outside can we just hit the flat really quickly well at the same time again movement and the Giants did that really well right you have a safety slide over top of the cornerback who's going to blitz on the outside like this movement that takes place here not giving Stafford a clear picture pre-snap can hopefully slow down some of those very quick reads for them offensive while it's pretty coverage specific but a guy like Jack Campbell and his size specifically for the middle of the field and all these routes that they quickly want to get out of their hands he should be a matchup piece in the spot you don't have to show it but if you are like even if some of those Tampa two looks his ability to flip his hips get around take away the middle of the field just be a presence he should affect Stafford and make him throw some of these passes a little high make him try to push it over top and hit a safety behind them Campbell should have a real presence against some of these middle field throws in this game now, what the Rams do well is they do a nice job of creating leverage with space. Like here for the New Orleans Saints, for example, they're not going to switch anything defensively, but notice at the bottom you're getting this press on the one receiver's side. Then when the motion comes across, you're going to see how the outside receiver jabs outside to take the outside corner with him. Now, all of a sudden, you create space, and you essentially create like a rub route with the stacked releases. Here, however, against Washington, they played a little different. They switch off the route, so the inside corner takes over top to take away Cooper Cup. And you can see by the depth, they're playing off coverage on the bottom. They're able to easily handle the depth on this. However, the difference is now at the top of the screen because now they shifted who the plus one is. So the plus one is on the opposite side of the field. And because of that, once that tight end releases vertically, the cornerback takes it. They can't quickly enough pass it off and the running back's uncovered. So giving Stafford time is a problem. You're just like a second and short situation. I'm kind of treating it like first down, right? I'm playing, you know, safety down the box. I'm taking away the flats. And obviously the, the challenge there is then going to be whether I'm blitzing on second and short or not is that they're going to hit you with boot action they're going to hit you with rollouts they're going to put our linebackers in the mix now if you're in man coverage it could be a little more simplified in terms of okay just man up your guy don't let him go by you but at the same time if you're doing zone coverage we know that based on film if I was playing the Lions I would immediately try to attack those linebackers underneath I try to pet attack Derek Barnes on the line of scrimmage I think he's gotten better but I would immediately try to go at those guys they're going to be aggressive they're going to want to play the run they're going to bring the blitz it's why I think you need to rotate those looks that way they don't exactly know when to anticipate oh extra rushers or not so they can't really set up consistently off of that but discipline's going to be key there barns it to the flat edge rushers getting up field right if you're bringing an extra blitzer getting up field taking away that bootleg potentially if those things look to hit they're going to roll into a single high safety or you're going to roll in two deep safeties if you're showing Stafford that two high safety look they do a really nice job of using a concept that we saw in the Super Bowl right where they have the hitch and then they run the dig route right behind it and they'll split your safeties they'll get right behind them you know they'll look off the linebacker they'll go over top so it gives Stafford a very easy one two ball gets out quick so even if you're blitzing they're going to find 
find quick answers to that throughout the middle of the field. For me, obviously, you want to make things go outside the numbers, not through the middle of the field, if possible. That's where you want to live defensively. One of the way that you would see defenses, specifically on third down, look to try to take away that middle of the field. We saw cover three blitz looks like this. Now, I'm going to show you two for examples. Here, Washington, you see how they don't really have much movement going on. They slightly roll their safety inside. They bring an extra rusher. And for the offense, they're able to motion over cup and just kind of sit him down, understanding we're basically going to set some picks up front. We're just going to settle him down. And the underneath flat defender is not going to be able to get out there. Versus this look for the Giants, where they roll the safeties into the snap. The slot's going to slide down and blitz. They're going to drop out opposite side to have their underneath defender. Then they're going to get a free rusher because of that. So instead of just stacking the line, they give you a lot of movement right at the snap. Slot comes, edge drops, safeties rotate, and all of a sudden, it's a mess. To play cover one, that's usually what we do on third down. But what I would like to do to that is drop out help specifically to the middle of the field. Like if I'm dropping help, if I have a rat or, or an edge that I'm dropping out, I want to drop them out to the middle. I either want to, you know, check their tight splits at the line, press them at the line, you know, get some contact and then rush, or I want to drop out underneath and force them to take away, you know, the kind of their short motion crossing routes. We don't play kind of that switch man look that a team like Dallas does, which we try to do against them and they took a few away. So instead, having those underneath pieces where they're going to try to create crossing routes underneath, specifically on third and short, third and medium against man coverage, that's kind of their go-to. So for me, I have to have the help to the middle of the field. Maybe I roll down a safety, right? Maybe I play some cover zero looks and just say, hey, man, let's go play underneath. Like, that's where our help will be. And I want them to have to work outside the numbers, right? So again, you're going to get that man coverage look. The first priority to me is taking away the crossers. The second thing, you know, if they come out in certain splits where they stack them out wide, they're going to try to get outside the numbers, try to minimize the help that you can actually give, and they're going to try to play one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I want them to be forced to have to try to play in, is throw the ball to the sideline on third and short, third and medium, jump some of those routes, take those things away. So for me overall, like I want to be very aggressive in this game, but that's kind of how I'm looking at it from a situational spot against this team. Now, more so on third down, right? There's a couple of guys. First off, Puka Nakua, because what they'll do is they'll overload one side to go three by one. They'll put a guy on an island and they'll try to create that one on one. So if you're playing man, like we talked about, you're dropping middle field help, you're putting a safety down, they're going to try to get that one on one to the outside. So in that case, you have to balance. Do I want to drop middle of the field and try to take that away? Or do I just bring a ton of heat? are looking to play man coverage in third down situations if it's a third and short situation you're probably gonna have to really deal with that underneath stuff now a team like dallas again they play really good switch man so here pass it off off all linebacker slot steps down takes away the swing route so there's that aspect of just playing very soundly plus they're able to get pressure at times without even bringing the blitz and that'll be the key because if it's third and short the lines are probably going to want to have help underneath they might be able to you know bring a linebacker drop on an edge for some underneath zone help but it's third and short the key is going to be taking away that first however it's the third and medium that's where i think the lines will lean into bringing pressure, especially if they're not getting there with four. They should be able to because I think their interior is very questionable, but that's where you start to dial up the heat on third and medium because you're not as threatened with the crossers, and on the outside, you just tell your off-coverage corners, you say, hey, just dive on everything. Play the sticks, dive on everything. They won't have time to get a double move because we're going to bring it. That's where you get some of those cover zero looks potentially from the Lions defense. You crank it up if it's beyond third and four in my eyes. In terms of the rushing attack, where we've seen it really change is that in the past, this was a heavy 11 personnel team, which we still see a lot of, but at the same time, it was also a lot of outside zone, right? It was Todd Gurley, it was Goff, it was outside zone, that's how they attacked. They do a really nice job of facing a lot of light boxes. It's one of the reasons that the run game has so much success, which is, again, why I'm consistently putting a safety into the box. Like, I'm just willing to play that way in this game, play aggressive, see if I can come up with a couple of turnovers. I've seen teams do it. Here would be an example of one of their duo run schemes, and as you can see, what they do is they'll utilize the receivers almost like tight ends and kind of these tight splits and for that you get lighter personnel packages defensively kind of like how we use tight ends for our advantage they do that with receivers they utilize these guys to block even in line but also forcing defense to play lighter boxes because you still have to worry about the receivers Stafford on the season has 11 interceptions. I try to be aggressive against this team personally. We'll see. Maybe that's something, again, you have to adapt throughout the game. But their rushing attack, the big difference has been a lot more dual rushing schematically, which has been strong double teams in the interior. Uh, it's a power rushing scheme as well through more so kind of like the zone blocking instead of pulling offensive linemen, which means that the guys that are consistently going to be in the mix are your defensive tackles, Ali McNeil, Benito Jones, Tyson Halawalu, Levi Owens. Like those are the guys that are going to be doubled at the point of attack. Now, in a duo block, always running towards the tight end side. You don't run to the weak side. That's not the same thing. So in that case, 
that also points to they're going to be trying to do that towards the three technique. Probably a lot of times going to be a guy like Ali McNeil, but also that mashup with the tight ends, which is going to be a lot of times Aiden Hutchinson. Like those guys as well at the point of attack, I need those guys to dominate. It's another reason I think we'll probably bring some pressure, maybe some slot pressure from that spot. Again, trying to blow up some of those plays, just create negatives, not give them kind of the run game outlet. Keep an eye on Benito Jones because what we saw in that Minnesota Vikings game, 5.75 yards per carry for the Vikings for Ty Chandler in that game. And that's not who the line says to this been, but they have to be good there in the playoffs. Now, the Vikings did a nice job. They went at him, right? And and that's something that the Rams will do, and I wouldn't be surprised if they came into this one and said, look, we're a dual team, but if we're not getting that movement, we go outside zone, we're going to try to wall off the 2i in Benito Jones. A lot of times, we're going to try to shoot to the second level, so while there's still going to be stress on Benito Jones, to me, I stress everybody else. Romeo Okwara, the linebacker play, especially for the duo runs, because all that is setting up is double teams to allow the running back to choose and, and pick and choose his gaps, and then they'll have the receivers step in to give run support as well to try to springboard into the second level. So the linebacker play, Campbell, those guys dealing with linemen and getting downhill, those guys are going to be crucial in this one to pursue the, the secondary support because I wouldn't be surprised. They said, let's keep continue to try to go at Benito. That's kind of their weak spot in the interior. And because that, everybody else is going to be stressed. Like, hey, Romeo, let's ball out. Hutch, let's ball out. Linebackers, secondary, we all have to be involved in stopping this run game. One guy that's become massive for the Lions, and he's taking over 30 snaps out each of the last two games, is Tyson Alualu, him playing on the interior there. And it's not always perfect, but you could see flash reps. And again, if they're doing some of that duel, if they lean into who they are, he'll be a guy to focus on the point of attack because he has really good reps and he has some others you're like oh that's not so good so where's the consistency Ali McNeil he looks good he looks quick he looks super explosive but again double teams is he holding ground that's going to be the challenge in this game and obviously you have a rotation I love the way that Levi's played I trust him against outside zone you could say the same thing dealing with doubles is there some question marks all those dudes really need to rise in this one plus you know when we speak about kind of working on tackles and tight ends you'll have some flexibility likely because of all the 11 personnel to defensively get a guy like Pascal or Kaminsky at defensive end to beef up a little bit of the size if you're looking for it because of how they match up. As well as there still is the outside rushing attack, the outside zone attack, some toss zone plays that they do as well. And for me, a lot of those, you'll see them go to the weak side. They'll try to kind of pin up your nose tackle. In our case, it would be like a Benito at a 2 I. They'll try to use their guard center, seal it up, then get up to the second level. They'll also use the receivers as well uh, to kind of block into the second level. You get a lot of pre-snap, you know, right then left fast, left and right fast motions. And they'll try to shoot those guys to the second level, pick up blocks. And they'll also utilize those guys as well on outside zones, even inside the tackle through the B gap, where they'll put them up like tight ends. So instead of it being like the strength of the formation, they're instead just receivers. But they'll step inside and they'll go to the second level, kind of like what we saw in the past with the Lions offense. But a lot of their zone or outside rushing attack comes through the weak side of the field. And that's where you're going to see a guy like Romeo. So that matchup alone, Romeo Cora versus the offensive tackles at the point of attack, is going to be massive because you're going to see that and then of course also the defensive back run support and this is an area where I'm always confident Brian Branch Kendall Vilder now the Giants do tend to play a little bit different up front with Lawrence in the interior. They played this three-tech, zero-tech, three-tech, and for them defensively, it could help against some of those interior runs, but it was the outside runs, it was the jet runs. Those were the issues that they got defensively. So schematically, yeah, if you want to change up coming to this one, put more guys on the line of scrimmage, right, maybe limit your off-ball linebackers, just play more edge defenders, just stack up the line like the Giants did, you could have some success, maybe more so against those interior runs, and the Lions may have to make some adaptions like that as the game rolls on, because usually they only do things like this if the offense comes out with an extra fullback or with an extra tight end but the Rams are normally in 11 personnel however this also left them susceptible to some of these jet sweep runs putting those guys in the action and also the man coverage they played in the back end they do consistently have a mix of oh here comes the jet sweep right here comes the end around and a lot of it you'll see will come through either a if you're sitting in too deep or if you're playing a lot of man coverage they'll try to make you chase in coverage and then they'll hit you with some of those jet sweep looks and they'll try to overload and you know they'll have receivers blocking up to the second level so defensive backs like Brian Branch going to be key to stop those specifically and then also just the discipline in general because they're very creative with how they do it they can get your three technique in a spot like against the Giants where he's the guy that's got to get out there but they'll pull their edge your edge rush try to play with the offensive tackle so that edge has to be able to still set the edge we've seen Barnes do this really well Hutch does this well but also at the same time that I need a defensive back run support but I feel like we match up well to get stops on that specifically in this game again short yardage the only 
real knock that I have for playing zone coverage there is that they utilize their tight end, a lot of delays, a lot of chips, and that's a spot where if you're playing zone, you'll kind of end up leaving those things open. But if you're in man coverage, right, obviously you have someone that just has to cover that straight up. So that's something you have to be aware of. But again, it's kind of why I'm okay with playing the man coverage on third down specifically. Um, but again, my help would be more towards the middle of the field just based on what I've seen schematically. On to the opposite side of the ball for the Lions offensively. How do the Lions have success in this game? Now, I do feel very confident about the Lions offense in this game. I just think we match up really well against this team. And, you know, I hear all the, oh, Stafford versus Goff. No, it's Goff versus, versus Rams defense, right? And the Rams defense has been a lot better, I think, statistically when you look at them. Against the run, middle of the pack, 4.2 yards per carry, 17th, 106 yards per game, that's 12th, 17th in expected points added through their run defense, right? So it, it's solid. That's an area where I do think the Lions are going to have success. And obviously, they're going to want to lean into that. They have a healthy offensive line, especially if Sam Laporta doesn't play. It's going to be very crucial that guys like James Mitchell, Brock Wright, they're going to have to block really well because these edge defenders, the way that they play schematically, you'll see some under fronts from them, but they play their edges in wide alignments. They'll play them at nine techniques. They'll stand them up off the ball. Why? Because guys like Michael Hoy, uh, Byron Young, both those guys are very capable. They drop into coverage, so they use those guys in so much coverage looks that they're out very wide. So any wide rushing attack, those guys against tight ends will be a key matchup, and I think we can move those guys. I trust James Mitchell and Brock Wright at the point of attack, and Sam Laporta, too, if he's able to go. Hopefully he is, because obviously he gives us more of a passing game threat as well. But specifically against this team, and you go back to when we played them a couple years ago, number one, running towards Aaron Donald, okay? Specifically when you're kind of more in the inside rushing attack, and if that's an inside zone, running towards Aaron Donald. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but he plays the three technique majority of the time. Now, you can flip that right at the snap. Oh, we want to flip the running back. We're in this formation. Oh, you want to show an under front? Great. We'll just flip the running back, go the other way. You can do those things to play their way. However, I think running towards Aaron Donald when he's at the three technique, not meaning like running into that B gap, but attempting to seal it up with that guard. A lot of teams use the same strategy and run right off the guard, right? Everywhere else, you say we got to win, we got to get movement, but we're going to run right off of that, right through the A gap, right off of Aaron Donald. We're going to run right towards him. Now, more outside rushing attack, more teams tend to kind of run away from Aaron Donald, so I would expect that as well. I think we ran the ball pretty well last time we played the Rams, and that was a strategy that we came in with. We were running right at him on some of those inside rushing attacks. Because of how they're built as a defense, to me, the key comes down to the interior offensive line. Like here, number 92 on the interior, Jonah Williams, right? He wins up front. They also, you can see they have Nick Hampton on the line. Like, you should be able to move him, and you can see the offensive tackle does. But it's going to be the interior matchups between that Jonah Williams, between Colby Turner, and of course, a guy like Aaron Donald to get that movement and continue to win there, especially in pass protection as well. Now, passing the football, I got some theories. The first theory was this. I would like to see the Lions potentially use a lot of quick throws out wide. Uh, maybe that's tight splits. You get some of those off-coverage looks with stack alignments. This is a defense that likes to play off-coverage with their corners for Durant and Kendrick. Like, those guys like to play off-coverage. They seem much more comfortable there. Um, so, for me and a guy like Witherspoon, who I think Witherspoon likes to press. He's long. But, at the same time, he's not great at the top of the route. I would like to see the Lions, especially if Laporta can't go, trying to get some of those splits, trying to get some of those speed out routes, right? This is Curl routes on the outside like get things outside the numbers uh specifically with early down passing throw early down throws St. Brown line them out wide right try to get that matchup we've seen that a ton we put him in the wide alignment like that's a spot where I'd like to see the Lions come in and maybe try to get attempt to do that early to get a pass game rhythm going and then off of that like as the game goes on I would set up a double move for sure off of that because a lot of times you won't get direct safety help especially if they're playing quarters or maybe they're in a cover six look like I would look to hit a double move off of that if I was running that early in the game some of those quick throws outside as well. Pass, we might do this with Laporta, but again, if Laporta can't play, then you know someone else has to do it. So whether that's Josh Reynolds, Jamison Williams, because the threat that he's going to put on some of these cornerbacks, like some of these cornerbacks, they just don't deal with speed extremely well. A guy like Durant, like if you get him one-on-one -on -one with J-Mo, I'm pushing him and then I'm breaking alpha then. He's going to give me some space. So for most of those guys, I love the matchup Josh Reynolds on Witherspoon. I think we'll see that a lot. I love it. First off, Witherspoon's at his best with being pressed, physical, he's long, but Josh Reynolds can get off the line of scrimmage pretty well, and at the same time, he's really good at the top of the route. So I like that matchup. It'll probably be the matchup we see a ton, but I like our matchups one-on-one -on, -one on the outside in this game specifically. Schematically speaking, and I'll show some clips, I'm sure, here, of how I would like to attack this team. First off, the biggest concern for me is man. I usually don't really have many concerns about zone coverage. It's more about can we beat man coverage, right, especially without Laporta because that's, like, the biggest question is most teams play man on third down, so can we beat man coverage just in general if we don't have him? We saw against Dallas, it was a little bit of a struggle. Their switch man coverage was an issue, and now you look at the Rams, you're like, oh, they, they kind of do the same thing, right? They'll play switch man as well. Now, 
Now, they may not get up and press as often. They may play more off coverage, but they're going to let things kind of shake out. They're going to let clusters and bunches so, sort themselves out. They're going to pass it off to their plus one. Like, this is a defense that will do something similar. The positive is we just saw it. The downside is, like, hey, we had some struggles with it. So the Lions will have to get creative and see that and be like, okay, we got to find some other answers here. But I also think that if you just go back to the Giants game, it's very easy to see that oh, they were able to find answers. And they had play after play after play. Guys just running wide open. And to me, if they can do that, Brian Dable's great. Ben Johnson can do that as well. And I think we definitely have the weapons to do it. So there's a lot of different ways that I like it. Uh, a couple things. Stack releases, right? Not necessarily having to stack at the snap, but stacking through releases, right? Making sure that you create depth, you create levels concepts where they're passing it off. Your, your goal is to get that linebacker one-on-one -on -one with the receiver crossing the middle field because they'll pass it to him. Uh, the running back is going to be key against this defense because the running back a lot of times, right, if a running back lines up offset to the left and they put a linebacker on that guy, or in their case, sometimes they'll do it with an edge defender as well. And then all of a sudden you utilize a fast motion, he takes off to the right side. Now they shift. Linebacker's got to take it. Now the other guy becomes the plus one. So when you do things like that, that piece in particular can shake up where the help can be passed off to. And that piece specifically for me, man and zone, is a spot that I really like it. Number one, because you'll get a lot of edge rusher matchups. We've seen a lot of teams utilize receivers at back. I think Jameer Gibbs can exploit that. We haven't really seen it this year. To me, this feels like the game, especially without Laporta. If there's someone that's going to show up and show out, it could be him because he's going to get matchups that he loves all day. Their linebacker group is good. Specifically, it's good with Ernest Jones. He's a very good linebacker. But outside of that, you know, they got their edge rusher so much in the mix. They rotate who rushes and who drops. That's someone that I would consistently put in the action as well as put St. Brown at running back, you know, delay things out of the backfield, right? Those are the guys because what you want is to attack middle of the field by creating leverage, getting matchups with backers, but also then going beyond that. And we saw that from the Giants as well, crossing routes with depth, right? Going behind that, forcing them to pass it off. Now we're going to show some examples of how the Giants found answers against the Rams, specifically exploiting who their free defender was going to be defensively. Now this first looks a little different because they're bringing a blitz on this play, but you're going to notice at the top of the screen here, they create kind of that levels look here. So that's really the key. You have their Live, off ball linebacker with no running back as a free defender. So you create those levels and you're able to get a receiver dragged in the middle of the field against the linebacker. And then at the top of the screen, the outside corner now is the free defender. Here's another example. Here's that fast motion. So you bring out the running back. Now the edge has to step down. Byron Young to take that away. On the opposite side, you drop out. They're dropping eight here. However, the other free defender are your two deep safeties. Well, one steps down to take away the crosser, but you cross both of them. Now all of a sudden at full speed, they would have to try to switch this thing off and he's got a clear path and he's wide open on the play. This next play, I really love this because again you're going to see this running back fast motion pre-snap right here and that again is going to shift who has who defensively and that's really where the key starts on a play like this so here goes the running back you see how they shift edge rusher steps out he takes it away now that off ball linebacker is your plus one so they run kind of the levels but if you see there you see how they push the route back up field now it's again the outside corner who has to take it so the inside corner drops out as help all that does now is it forces a pick the outside corner's got to work around and again receivers wide open they didn't con connect on it but the receiver's wide open on the play, again, by how they created it. And then here, again, you kind of have some of that off-coverage look on this play. You kind of run the quick hitch on this play, and you're able to have something underneath. The receiver just drops it. And then finally here to the tight end, all right? Now, this is something the Lions could absolutely to utilize is delaying and chip delaying their tight ends like this because they're putting their edge rushers in so much of the mix. You release both your guys on the outside. Both corners are taken away. Now you're free defender because they go vertical. You have to deal with it if it's vertical. Now, all of a sudden, because you delayed the tight end, no one accounts for the tight end. Linebacker's trying to get out there late and you give up a huge chunk on a third and long so they put together a blueprint of how to attack, attack them. kind of their plus one and their, their willingness to switch against man coverage so I think this is a team that we can absolutely have answers for and we have the speed to just run away from these guys with guys like Jameson Williams so I'm very confident that we're going to have answer there you'll probably see some JMO in the slot especially from a lot of shotgun just to find ways to get guys to take off against this team especially if they're playing a lot of that switch man coverage which they, they probably will because they just saw it on film and it was pretty successful against us it's a heavy show coverage team now they do roll out of it but the middle of the field is very attackable now this is in man coverage but it's still a cover six look here for the defense you can see the lines again pre-snap motion okay and then they're also going to utilize the play fake and they simplified it back in 2021 but it's the same thing you get the linebacker to not get depth you go right behind the slot corner because the slot corner is trying to pass it off and all of a sudden you have a big chunk over the middle of the field set up by your run game so it was more simplified then but we've even seen moves seen things like this against dallas against man but this one's a good zone our third down i would anticipate that a lot of their help is probably going to go to amin 
Ross St. Brown, uh, especially if he's in the slot. Maybe we try to align him out wide to try to get more one-on-ones there as well. And if the Lions can get him out on like a Witherspoon or something, I think they'll feel good, even though he has a ton of length at the top of the route. But from the slot, they'll probably say, let's let's roll down our safety. The safety will go to help him. If not, that's a matchup you go to. Lake has played well. He's their nickelback. He's played well this season. But he is the guy that you go after if they're leaving him one-on-one and they're playing man coverage. He is absolutely the guy that you attack against this defense, no question to me, one-on-one. But I assume we're going to get some help there. So outside of going to that direction, I love the back usage. I love putting a guy like St. Brown in the backfield. I'm doing everything I can to put those linebackers and edge defenders in the mix. And then again, I like our matchups on the outside. Specifically, though, if it's longer third-down situations. Because once it starts to get longer, they're a team that will start to drop into quarters or cover six or even Tampa two. And they'll start to kind of drop out. And Tampa two's different you want to go more seams there but against a team like this like they'll play a little bit more of that off zone especially if you're in longer third downs so again Josh Reynolds Peoples Jones guys like that at the top of the route that can separate win through contest situations those are guys that I like in those spots specifically specifically if you're in some third and longer spots one thing that could be very beneficial and this is the point we don't know a ton if Sam Laporte is going to play or not but even with just, you know, Brock Wright and James Mitchell, especially in the red zone, this is a perfect example. This was Dallas here using this to their advantage. I think the Lions would love to be able to play heavy personnel, put more of those backers on the field, take their defensive backs off the field if possible. An example like this, because of how they want to play it in coverage, right, you put one tight end out wide, you put another tight end in the slot here, and you can see that the help goes over the edge defender. So he's going to pass it off when it goes vertical. What that essentially does is it leaves the inside slot tight end with a linebacker one-on-one. If we have a Laporta, we would love to get that matchup. They got it with their bias tight end, we'd love to get that with our our best tight end as well. Maybe that becomes James Mitchell in this game. But if we have Laporta specifically, I expect the Lions to utilize more heavy personnel, especially inside the 20, to again try to create matchups there that they feel good about offensively. And those are matchups that you can feel really good about, especially to golf skill set, getting those guys one on one. And I think using 12 personnel is able to do that. We'll probably also see some Dan Skipper in this game if we don't have Sam Laporta. Feel good about what we can do on the outside. I don't think they want any part to do with some of the speed that we have. I love the matchup with Josh Reynolds and Witherspoon as well. And I do think that this is a defense that we can attack. I think we can run the football. You know, you look at their interior, obviously it starts and ends with Donald, but at the same time, what they also have between guys like Brown and Williams, like those guys, you can move at the point of attack. They're not bad, but you can get movement there specifically. And then again, your tight ends versus the edge defenders is a key matchup for any outside rush. This isn't the best example of success, but it is something I think the Lions will try to utilize to keep this defense honest, particularly these edge defenders. The jet sweep looks here on a fake toss, also kind of the jet off it with the receiver. Looks like this, I think, would make sense. End arounds. Most teams do it, trying to keep these edge defenders honest up Now, field. when you talk about their pressure ability, the key there for me is this. Linebackers and edge switch. So you'll get linebacker rushing, edge dropping out. Even when they're not blitzing, they're only in the middle of the pack in terms of blitzing. One thing they don't do well is create pressure. They're like just over 18%. To me, from what I've seen all year, that's a recipe for disaster for the opposite team. If you can't create pressure without blitzing, you're in trouble against our offense, especially when we're healthy. So the biggest challenge there will be just picking up assignments rather than just one-on-ones. Obviously, Donald is the key. You want to get multiple hands on him. And because Donald is so threatening, the other guy that becomes threatening is Kobe Turner. He's been a great pass rusher. He gets a lot of one-on-ones. And whoever's got to deal with that guy is probably going to be on an island dealing with it. So while Donald will move around if you're in third and long, he'll go line out wide. They'll go three by one, right? They'll run on so on one side. To me, it's always going to be more about picking up some of the assignments, which we've done a really good job of. And then, of course, the pans are going to go to Aaron Donald. But on top of that, it's going to be about matching Kobe Turner. If Kobe Turner is crazy in this game, we're probably not in a good spot. If Kobe Turner does nothing, if you don't hear him get a sack or a quarterback hit, you'll feel really good, I think, about what the Lions are doing offensively because he's the guy that kind of becomes the X factor in terms of their ability to get quarterback pressure. So overall, man, when you look at the back end, Jordan Fowler, I like him a lot. He's very good at some of those play action concepts, reading it, taking them away. You know, they're good at doing some of those things offensively. They also have Josh Johnson, so they have a veteran back there as well. So again, early down passing, you know, put them into put them into conflict in their man coverage and then zone coverage underneath. You know, you can kind of do a lot of similar things. They're giving you off coverage. I expect us to be able to attack that uh, while at the same time, you know, I usually have very much confidence in our ability to attack zone coverage. So I actually feel really good about our offense in this game. It's one of the reasons I'm very confident. I think the Lions are going to want to stick to a similar game plan in terms of we have to get the lead. We're going to play aggressive. We just need to win the turnover battle. That's really the key at home. Win the turnover battle. Don't let them take it away. And honestly, 
if the run game's there like I expect it to be, they shouldn't take the football away. I think when you look at kind of the overall, you know, approach to this one, not only winning the turnover battle, but I think you also have to look at the aspect of, you know, the Rams are sixth most penalties in the National Football League. And I think for the Lions that are coming off of only four penalties against the Minnesota Vikings, which was playing clean football, that's something they're going to want to lean into. Now, the Rams don't have a lot of false start penalties, but they're going to be hoping that they can build that lead, that crowd goes insane, and they can get some of those flags and uh, really just outplay them in terms of we're playing a more clean and disciplined football game. And I think that's where the Lions are at. It's been dialed in throughout the offensive line. So I have trust in those guys offensively. It's more about taking that LA Rams offensive line with a crazy crowd and making them do something that they don't do a ton of, have some negatives on early downs and throw off everything about the quick passing game and the timing of this offense, make Stafford want to push it. And then all of a sudden you force some of those turnovers, right? So that's the case. And if you do those things, if we walk out winning the turnover battle, we'll also probably win time of possession. And I think the Lions will walk away feeling good and they'll, they'll be able to win this football game. So I'm very confident the Lions will win this game because I think those things will play out in this one. I know the Rams can score points and they probably will. Biggest concern is breakdowns there, but I think aggressiveness will override some of the yards and completion percentage that maybe we give up. I think it's going to be about creating turnovers. So I think the Lions end up winning that battle. I think they end up winning the game. And I think ultimately the Lions can control this game throughout. And that's really the key in this one. So I'm going to leave it right there. I got the Lions winning this one, of course, but I really feel confident about this one. We're moving on to the divisional round. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'm